Welcome to Unit 3. In this unit, we're going to be looking at some of the object-oriented programming concepts of TypeScript. Classes, interfaces, inheritance, polymorphism, and all that good stuff. I'm going to create a new file called classes.ts, and this is the file where we're going to be trying out all the different uh, class-related concepts. Uh, how do I create a class? Let's say I want to create a class called person. The way to do this is by using the class keyword and then the name of the class, open curly brace and close curly brace. And with this, we have a class definition. Class doesn't contain anything, but this is how you define a class in TypeScript. This is very similar to how you would define classes in some other programming languages as well. So now that you have this class, you can create an instance of this class and assign it to a variable like this to say var a person equals new person. So it's the new keyword followed by the name of the class. Again, very similar to a whole lot of other programming languages. So this calls the constructor of the class and it creates a new class and assigns the instance to this variable called a person. Now we don't have any constructors. We don't have anything in this class. So this a person is going to be an empty instance, right? So we could add stuff to this. This is an empty class. Let's add a member variable to this. The way to add a member variable is like this. So let's say you want to create two member variables, first name and last name for the person. So to create a member variable called first name, you just give the name of the member variable and then a semicolon. And that's it. We now have a member variable called first name in the class person. So let's say I want to create one more last name. And now with this, we have two member variables, first name and last name in the class person. And now when there is a new instance of the class created and assigned to a variable, now this variable contains an object with two properties, first name and last name. And you can access those by using the dot notation. Again, like a whole lot of other programming languages, I do a dot and then you get the member variable name. So I say first, as you noticed in Visual Studio Code, you've got type completion. I do a dot and then I get the options I can choose from. It's very convenient. Now I can do a console.log of this variable, in which case it's going to print the value. I can also assign a value to this. So I say a person dot first name equals Kashik. So this variable has the value, which is the string, and that's what's going to get printed when I'm accessing this. Let's quickly verify this. TSE classes.ts, which is going to compile this to a .js file, and then I do a node classes.js, and I'm going to get the first name that's assigned back. There is also a good to string for implementation by default. So if I were to just print the object itself, I'm going to get the class name and then the object in a literal format. So I have the property name and the value. If I had assigned a last name, it would have printed that too. Okay, this is good and all, but there is the additional benefit you get with TypeScript. Remember the type declarations we did for variables with uh, the primitive types. You declared a variable as a number, a boolean, and so on. Well, guess what? You can do that with classes too. If you want to restrict this a person variable to only contain instances of the person class, you can declare this variable to be of person type. And the way to do that is very similar to what we did for the primitive types. I can say colon person. Now what I'm doing is I'm declaring this variable to be of person type. So by declaring a class over here, I'm basically extending the types that are available to me in my code. I've created a new type that can be used for variables across the board in TypeScript. Also note that 
since you're assigning a person instance to this a person variable during the declaration during the var well the implicit typing of typescript can do the job it can you can actually remove this declaration and this is implicitly typed to be of type person if you mouse uh, over this variable you can see variable a person is of type person implicitly because you're assigning a value of an instance of this person while it's being declared again the same concepts of implicit typing work for your custom classes as well you can also do type declarations for member variables since you haven't specified what the types of the member variables are these can hold any type so i can have uh, first name equals 10 here and it's going to be fine but what if you want to restrict it to be just of type string well the type declarations work here too i can say this is of type string and uh, this is of type string too so in this case uh, TypeScript is going to do the type checking so whenever the property that's being assigned to is not matching the type then it's going to complain so all the things that you've learned before work just the same way but now you have created a custom type that fits well with the TypeScript's uh, declaration and type checking features now before we wrap up here's the thing that I want to show you if you compile the class the way it is all right let me save this Compile the class and we look at the transpiled JavaScript file. So you notice here that you don't have a class concept in native JavaScript. You see here that you see this odd uh, annotation like thing, but what JavaScript actually gets rendered is a function. Remember I told you how before the introduction of classes in JavaScript, all we had was functions and prototypes, and we had to figure out a way to create these classes using just functions and closures and prototypes. So this is what's happening over here. Behind the scenes, the JavaScript that's actually run is the same way we used to create classes for many, many years in JavaScript. It's just the syntactic sugar that we get by using the class concept. So I just want to highlight that what's happening behind the scenes is just good old JavaScript functions.